guys, today we're here with Anna and she is from Italiana Wine Tours and also Parallo Wine Club in one of the top wine regions of Italy up in Piedmont or Piedmonte as they say in Italy. Um, so I'm just going to say hi and Anna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello everybody, cheers <laughs> Alisa, first of all. Um, my name is Anna and I'm originally from Napa, California. I grew up in the wine country in California and found myself in one of the greatest wine regions in the world, I would consider it, and not just me, in uh, Piemonte in Italy. So this is in the northwest corner of Italy and I've lived here for about 17 years. And I live in a small town called Fossano um, in the middle of the province of Cuneo in Piemonte. Wow, that sounds beautiful. So what's, what's it like, your little town? What's it close to? What biggest cities is it close to? So probably one of the most visited areas of our region would be the Lange Valley, which is where Barolo and Barbaresco wines are from. Um, we also are about 45 minutes away from Turin, which is, the, which is the main city, and not even far from Milan in reality. So getting flights here is, is quite easy because it's about two hours, two and a half hours to Milan and about 45 minutes to one hour to Turin. And even Nice is not so far away. It's about four hour drive. So the, the French Riviera is also close by and a lot of people like to take trips there in the summer or connect Piemonte with um, the French Riviera. Oh wow that sounds gorgeous. So what's it like where you live? What's the weather like? What is it green rolling hills? Is it mountains? Is it lakes? Well where I live I'm in this little part where there's plains but it's between the Alps, the French Italian Alps on the west and the rolling hills of the Lange. So obviously the wine country is all these beautifully covered, you know, vineyard covered hills with the castles on the top. Um, we even have a, a castle in, the, in my town, which is in the main square where we have our market every Wednesday. Um, but the view that I see looking out my window is of the Alps. And there's the highest peak is called Monviso. And they actually think that this inspired the Paramount Pictures introduction mountain. So that's basically my view. If you can imagine that, oh. that's my view. Out <laughs> that's fantastic. And what's it like? What's it like living in there? I mean, I have the rose colored glasses on and everything <laughs> sounds fantastic. But take us for a stroll through your town. What's it like living in Fasano? Well, my town is not um, a tourist attraction. It's a very residential area, but it's beautiful because the streets are lined with trees. We have a lot of parks. Um, people are always out walking. Uh, the grandparents are always pushing their grandkids around in the strollers. And everybody's really involved in the community, uh, out to get their bread at the Paneteria. And then our town is also famous as you know, Belle, for um, <laughs> yeah. panettone. So panettone is no. the, the, the sweet cake that we eat at holidays, um, like Christmas, mm -hmm. which pairs very well with the Moscato d'Asti, the sweet sparkling wine, which also comes from our area. But when I walk out of my house, I smell baked goods all the time because it's coming from the panettone factories, which are so famous here. Um, Sometimes I get a little bit of cow poop smells and manure, which is <laughs> which gets mixed in because it is a very agricultural area. So since I live in the flat area, um, we also have some of the best veal around. We're very known for the veal. They eat a lot of steak tartare, so uh, raw meat because uh -huh. it's very lean and very prestigious. And uh, so it, it's, be it's beautiful. And the weather is fantastic. So um, it's, Alpine, it's at the foot of the Alps. We have many, many sunny days. Um, it never gets too cold. It can drop down below zero at night. Um, in the recent years, we haven't even had that much snow, maybe two or three snowfalls a year. But it doesn't really get um, 
below zero in Celsius. Um, so, <laughs> but it's very, very comfortable. The uh, What I love is the blue skies. So I think in any kind of mountain climate like that, um, even if it's a, a bit chilly for a California girl, to see the sunshine is makes the difference. Oh, it sounds gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So what's mm -hmm. it like when you walk through town? Obviously, it smells like Christmas and Panathone, which I <laughs> love. I could live on that, I think. Um, so but if someone was going to move there, what would it be like when you walk, say you're going to walk into town? So cobblestone streets, tree lined, it smells like Christmas. What's definitely it like into town? I think um, one thing when I go home to California that I really miss is the, are the piazzas, the squares, the cobblestone streets, the, a true identity of each town, a, a town center where people gather and, you know, all the individual shops are, and you can easily meet people and, and have a social life just by taking what I told you is called the passeggiata, so uh, a walk after lunch or, um, and you're always bound to run into somebody. And it's so nice to see all ages um, out and about, which, which I love. Um, so lots of, you know, uh, older people sitting on the benches and chatting with each other. And uh, like I said, with their strollers out with the kids and, you know, hearing people just chatting and spending the day uh, shopping and doing their errands, but all, at all the different shops in the town center oh. under the porticos. Normally on the main, you know, in, in the center of the villages, there's uh, like a Via Roma, so it's like the main street and porticos, arches, lots of cafes, lots of people out uh, standing at the bars, drinking their yeah, we call them bars here, but it's cafe. <laughs> uh, drinking the espresso and then going to do some shopping, get their bread and go home for lunch. Oh, wonderful. And what's it like when you go out? Like are there lots of restaurants and theaters and things to do and activities? And I think um, Italy, whether you're in a big city or a smaller town, there's always activities that are being planned and food festivals, which, you know, I love so um, <laughs> lots of stalls and outdoor markets. And um, if you have a family, there's always activities uh, for families in towns nearby, out in nature, in the farms. And um, I think people just love sitting at the cafes and and having their coffee, like I said, or um, aperitivos is my favorite moment of the week. So around seven o'clock, normally on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, or even during the week um, in the summer, you just sit out on the terrace or on the patios and you sip your wine and you people watch and they give you this amazing spread of food for free <laughs> so oh, wow. you buy you know maybe a glass of wine good wine for four euros five euros a glass and they'll bring you out a whole platter of food that's amazing and that sounds fantastic to me because a, I love food and wine, but just that sense of community, that sense of family, that sense of everything. So what's and, it like in your house, like when you are at home? I think most people live in um, apartments and smaller things like that rather than big, you know, palatial mansions or anything. It's more, more of a, an apartment community. Exactly. I'd say the average Italian lives in an apartment building um, in pretty tight quarters. I mean, we usually there's one bathroom per apartment, um, but it's nice. You know, I think it's important to have balconies at least or a terrace where when it's nice outside, you can sit outdoors and you kind of get to know your neighbors on the other side of the <laughs> courtyard. And um, I guess for the social aspect, it's a positive thing. Yeah. And so yeah, it's, it's quite normal. To live so in an what would be your advice to someone that says this all sounds fantastic I want to go and live in this gorgeous country and eat free food and drink wine all day 
What is your advice to people that are looking to live in Northern Italy? As you said, it does get cold sometimes, but I mean, winter in every country gets cold. So what would be your advice to people that are actually looking to live there, to live in Italy? I think it's very personal, but I think you, you know, as always, um, it's a good idea to try to get the lang get familiar with the language, because especially if you're going to be in um, a small town, it might be hard to communicate. So you have to have a lot of courage and not be afraid to make a fool out of yourself. And uh, I remember just trying desperately to find anybody who could speak English with me or drawing on a piece of paper, lots of <laughs> gestures, which you have to learn that. Italian gestures, that <laughs> yes. helps. Um, but apparently there's dictionaries now for Italian gestures, which, which will help. Um, but make the effort like anywhere you go and show them that you want to know their culture. And um, in the North, you know, the stereotype is they tend to be a little bit more reserved. So I think on your part, you have to kind of even go out of your way even more um, to invite them for a coffee or to your house for dinner. Aperitivo is always a nice, safe, let's have one drink. And then if it keeps going, then it means it's a yes. good sign. A quick pizza at home and spend the evening together. If not, each one goes home. So um, I would just say that. Nice little get to know you ritual anyway. Mm -hmm. So basically, do you think that they should live there first or rent there for a little while to get a real feel for the town? I do because um, like anywhere again, just uh you have to find the place that's most suitable suitable for you and maybe what you you have in your mind um doesn't really play out when you go somewhere so when I thought of Italy for me my family is originally from southern Italy so I was imagining fish dishes hot weather really outgoing people you know the, the typical Mediterranean climate but Piemonte which is part of Italy is actually reminded me more of like Switzerland, basically. Yeah. So it was kind of a <laughs> clashing with what I had in my head. So I think uh, be open-minded and um, realize that there's a lot to Italy and you just have to find the right place for you. So it could be beach or countryside or wine or big city. So um, definitely, I think living here, and. It's one thing to visit and it's another to live here. So I think you have to have a lot of patience and there's a lot of bureaucracy and confusion and everything takes a lot of time. So you have to see if that works for you. Perfect. Well, it sounds absolutely gorgeous. And I, for one, desperately want to visit that area because I would love to see all those beautiful green rolling hills and the vineyards and try some of the wines and the special locality things. It just sounds gorgeous so we'll leave it there and thank you so much for sharing your wonderful little region of Italy with us and it was my pleasure yay and I look forward to talking to you again so cheers I don't have a glass cheers <laughs> grazie okay. ciao, ciao. ciao benvenuti welcome to my house here in Italy we live in a normal I would say average sized apartment that we remodeled so as you can see, we have a big open space. Uh, this is also our office where we work from home. So we can, can come see our garden over here. So we have the last garden patch over to the left. Um, it's winter time, so we have mostly uh, cabbage and broccoli and leeks, lettuce, onions, and each tenant in our building has their own patch. So we have terraces are very important to look for when you have a when you're renting an apartment um, because you have to hang out your clothes to dry. Um, also, I just wanted to mention the kitchen. You can see it's quite modern. Um, so when you're renting a place, if it's furnished, you'll have the kitchen, but many times it will be unfurnished. And that would mean you'd have to budget a couple thousand euros 
um, for buying your own kitchen. So sometimes you can find them used, uh, but that can also be somewhat of a hassle. So we have um, two bedrooms. We're a family of four, so we're used to living in tight quarters. Um, normally in Italy, you'll have a long hallway with uh, the rooms off coming off of them. So we have our, our room here, one bathroom, and then the kids' bedroom where they share share a bedroom. And again, if you want to come out here, you can see we have another terrace on the other side. And everything is really close to where we live. So we have the kids' school is right in front of us where you see the church tower. We have a nice street uh, lined with trees. And on this street, we have a little bit of everything. We have the butcher, we have a, a fruit and vegetable vendor, we have a, a shoe repairman, of course a cafe, a paneteria. So pretty much everything we need is right here in walking distance. So there's our apartment building. And this is the lucky area in Fossano in my town because there are some green spaces as you can see. So even though we live in an apartment, I'll show you, we have our own little vegetable garden patch and every tenant has their own allotment. So ours is actually quite big. So you can see here is our garden. Hi, I'm at our midweek market. Uh, so in Via Roma, where the cobblestone streets are, we have all the clothes and accessories and then we move into the square where the castle is where you have all the fruits and vegetables. Siamo lì con le dimensioni. Controlla. E io non so come controllare. Sì, controlla la, la forma, alla fine più o meno uno va all'altro. Sì, sì, va benissimo. Questa va? Bene. Thank <laughs> you. 